I probably should start the game first. Ha. Wrong screen. All right, guys. This is game number one of Lu Bu versus Calculated Throw Division D East game. First map going to Tomb of the Spider Queen, picked by Calculated Throw on the right. So Tomb of the Spider Queen, one of those maps where rotation is a very powerful tool. You want to be able to rotate between mid and mid and top. Maybe get some of the ganks on the bot lane. So having those high wave clear heroes is very powerful to be able to put pressure. Obviously, solo lane is also powerful, and people that can poke onto the turn-in points and delay those gem turn-ins. Right off the bat, we're standing off of the Asmodan ban and the J Jimmy ban from Calculated Throw. Looking a little bit like Hero League at this point, you know, with these bans, everybody you know, is still on the hype with the Asmodan and Rainer reworks. Um, look, looking pretty strong. They're just kind of annoying to deal with as can stack late game. Honestly, Tomb of the Spire Queen has always been Azunan's best map, and especially now with the new... But hold the phone, we got an Ana ban. You don't see that every day. Now, it's, it's pretty interesting, too, because you have to know that now that means Lubu was... Right clicking everybody's profile on Calculated Throw and seeing what their most played heroes are because these teams have no research on each other. There's no season four that they can look at stats and see what they played. So they're just winging it at this point, seeing, just kind of guessing. Now, did uh, Calculated Throw did end up banning Chromie again, getting rid of these two long range siege mages with Azunan and Chromie. Leaves open Yorel, leaves open Garrosh, leaves open Genji, leaves open. I mean. They have all the time, all the uh, at least all the heroes available, honestly, that are really good on this map. And they pick up their mage first with the Kalthos. Provides a lot of AoE damage, provides a lot of wave clear, uh, getting some of that living bomb available to spread on people. And calculated throw, picking up Diablo, one of the solid tanks right now, and Gul'dan. This is, Gul'dan's honestly kind of one of those staples on this map due to his immense wave clear from really far away, inconsistent. He doesn't really have to wait for too many cooldowns. Fell Flame is instant and can keep himself tapped and um, healthy. So that's looking like a pretty strong rotation from Calculated Throw already. And Lubu's answering with the Rhaegar and Joanna. Gives them a lot of map control. Gives them, you know, you have Joanna with already has one of the better wave clear tanks. Throw a, a lightning shield onto him from the Rhaegar and Joanna clears the lane by himself pretty instantly. By herself, excuse me. So who does Calculator Throw not want to play against at this point? They they see a mage, they see a tank, and they see a healer already. They're probably looking to ban a solo laner that they might not want to deal with, and there goes the URL. Perfect. Um, they do get the next two picks, so that's something they're going to want to look at. Just to make sure, hey, we're going to get the next two picks. What do we want to play? What do we not want to play against? And the same thing for Lubu. Basically, we're going to say, what do we think that they're going to pick here that we want to, that we want to deny? Actually getting rid of the Tracer. Again. Probably doing some scouting of the team, going through their play player profiles and seeing what people like to play, what's their most played heroes, or what their most win weight hero win rate heroes are. And wow, a new break. That's not what I was expecting. So a new break is essentially being their solo. Honestly, Diablo is probably a better solo laner than a new break. The, the Diablo rework with his auto attack build is actually probably a little bit better at solo lane because of the self healing ability um, and pretty much the same wave clear than a new break. But, you know, that gives them. So they're. I mean, the new break is kind of telling me dive. You know, you, they usually pick a dive hero with a new break. Diablo is pretty divey, but Gul'dan, not so much. Lubu answering with a Zagara, looking for that strong. Solo lane, uh, solo lane pressure, and also the Muradin. So again, both teams picking two main tanks, uh, essentially. Muradin being that jump kind of in your face tank, you want to kind of be more the peeling, but also just like don't run past me type tank. And calculated throw, answering with the thrall. So this is the point where we're giving the teams a little bit of time to roll swap. So with that, I mean, these are your two teams. This is game number one. Season 5 Nexus Gaming Series Division D East. Who do you guys think in chat of who's going to win this? I mean, like, who has the better team here, in your opinion? Trying to mess some stuff, move some stuff around. So, like, on one, I, I like the. We already got some portrait synergies. 
which is really nice. It's always good to see the teams being to have that camaraderie to, to synergize together. Let's see if we get some colors and team and skins of mounts in game as well. So I mean, it's such, this is honestly, I mean, it's a little odd. I'm just going to be frank. So you got double tank on both teams, so it's going to be very hard to kill people. So you're basically saying we're going to play the sustain game. We're going to we're going to draw these fights out or try to pick somebody off that might be out of position. We got a Murder that can jump in, but you can only really follow up with Zagara and Kael'thas. On the other hand, you got Thrall can do some damage once it gets to the late game, once he gets his stacks up, and then Gul'dan has a lot of poke. Not too much kill pressure, but just a lot of poke. And right off the bat, I'm feeling, I'm feeling Lubu as has a little better of a team comp for this map, but we're gonna have to see. Ooh, now I'm actually scared that I didn't update my stuff. I did. Okay, good. All right, on the left-hand side, we got the blue team, Lubu. We got Streak Queen on the Rhaegar, Alan Hicks on the Joanna, VDZ on the Zagara, Makrata on the Murden, Bandit on the Kael'thas. Everybody on the basic horse mount. And on the right-hand side, we got Calculated Throat, Strugans on the Anubarak, Mystic on the Gul'dan, Ninja, Ninja Elephant on the da, Diablo, Scooterman on the Thrall, and Grevent on the Alexstrasza. So, there's a little talk in chat. Everybody's going back and forth about what I probably should switch my scenes to make it a little bit easier because I've done this before. Don't look at boss. There's a little chatty team, definitely. It's a lot of fun. A lot of sprays going on. I don't even know what spray that is. A little bit of checking. Nobody wants to step into the fort. Good stacks. So go down. Give him go down two stacks there. We do see Diablo kind of going into the solo, I'm going to heal myself build with the um, Feast of Fear. A lot of times you want to see, a lot of times you'll see the Diablo take the Globe talent on level 1 because that synergizes well with the Alex Strauss talent at 7. Yeah, a little bit of scuffle here, Diablo trying to do a charge into the, the Rhaegar, into the towers. But we're actually seeing pretty much a 2v2 lanes on both lines. We got a little bit of rotation coming out from Lubu, going back and forth on the Rhaegar. And right off the bat, Thrall missed it. Comes out with barely any health, killing the, the Zagara on the bot lane. So we're going to see some teams do some rotation down here. Thanks, Mongoose22 with the raiding party. Uh, welcome other viewers of NGS. We got Division D East, game number one, just getting underway. But looking around. A little bit of poke, a nice little burrow out, make sure it does not take up too much damage for free. So we got these double tanks kind of jumping around. Diablo and Murden facing off in the top lane, kind of just walking back and forth at each other as Diablo tries to run up to him. Just trying to get walks up to him, trying to get that flip, but let's see what's going on in the mid lane. We got that Gul'dan clear, getting a lot of stacks going on, that's six right now. We do see Thrall picking the more off, like the little bit more of the Solo lane talent with the Rolling Thunder. They did a nice rotation onto the Diablo to try to get some ganks, but I mean Diablo is pretty tanky. He's already about a quarter health of a quarter souls. We're gonna have to really pay attention to the solo lane since uh, Zagara did already die once. But looking at talents, no, I mean other than the Rolling Thunder, there's nothing really too out of the ordinary. Level four reached. For calculated throw, Gul'dan's getting in trouble though. Looking for that flame strike for the backside, barely gets away, and now Bandit's in trouble, but he walks his way as well. Couldn't really get that last stun from a new brack. Or a bed of barbs. Not a bed of barbs, that's the talent. The um Well, man, I'm not good at this. Untapped Fear says. Untapped Fear must be looking for Lubu, whereas Fury Popsicle is looking for calculated throw. Let's pay attention to this bot lane a little bit. It's been pretty even. Looks like Rhaegar might be coming down, trying to do a little bit of poke. See, this is the one of the benef big benefits of Rhaegar on this map is that she just gives so much vision for her team. She will be able to see if anybody rotates down to try to gank her. Nice stacking. New Brax getting a little bit of himself in trouble in the mid lane. So right now, gem count is in favor of calculated throw. Been a little bit better with making sure that they can control the gems. Most of that being held on to by the Thrall, but granted Zagar has already been able to turn in. Now having your bot laner turn in on this map is probably one of the harder things, so it requires a good amount of rotation 
to be able to nice interrupt, stopping the Nubrek from getting on there, and the Diablo with the Murden. Now Murden should have to be able to jump away. Lubu taking their knights pretty early. It's going to allow them to take their knights. Gives them a little bit more pressure on the map. You can push with him with that uh, mage armor buff from the knight camp. So Calculator Throw is really going to have to try to look to get their thrall into turn in. Now neither team has enough gems yet. Calculator Throw is the closest. Not by much. By one gem. Yeah, both yeah, Ember, two both teams have two main tanks. So we're gonna expect to see a lot of long fights as the tanks run around to try to uh, to annoy each other. A little bit of scuffle around the turn ins, neither team wants to let the other team turn in for free. And so far Lubu's been doing a great job stopping the turn ins. They're really playing this goalkeeper, going back and forth. They have long range from the Zagara, they have long range from the Kael'thas, they have flashlight from the Joanna. But now Lubu's looking in a better spot. There hasn't been any chance for Calculated Throw to get in there. And they only need one person to turn in. And now with the double tank, they actually are going to zone them out completely and get the first turn into Lubu. And and lose Thrall in the process with the gank to Kael'thas. And that's going to be spelling not looking good for Calculated Throw. Now keep in mind, this was the map pick for Calculated Throw. So they're coming in here with a plan. Now for both teams, the wave clear for Calculated Throw is not the best. They only have Gul'dan. The, one of the downsides of picking double tank on this map is that if you end up losing the Web Weavers, it's going to take you a long time to clear. Let's see, Kael'thas going Flame Strike build. There's a lot of frontliners with the three frontliners from Calculated Throw, so I think that's a good pick. We have the Four man rotation hitting up to the top lane. <coughs> Joanna running in, trying to get something. They have the Web Weavers coming behind them. Big flame strike damage, popping out Dragon form for uh, Alex Straza and Gravent. Keeping that basically says, hey guys, you do not go any farther here. We're going to push this away. And you're not going to get this fort. So, oh, all in all, they actually defended it rather well. Um, Can still have Thrall might have ran the wrong direction. It actually gets ca caught out, He's running this a little bit unsafe. But Kael'thas might be the next one to, to go. Unfortunately, the rest of his team is not there. Zagara is determined to get this bottom for it, and I think she's going to. So that gives level half a level to ten for Lubu. We're probably going to want to see Calculated Throw try to take these knights. So that way they can have some... They're not afraid of Lubu going to turn in. They, they don't have to worry about it at all. So what they want to do now is they want to provide some map pressure. So that way they can just freely walk into the turn in. So once again, Nubrax looking for those push. Going in for the dive. Doesn't quite hit it, but now it's putting himself in kind of a bad spot. He already used his escape. Level 10s for Lubu, so they don't really want to fight too much. Again, more delay coming out. They're just not able to get in here. I mean, the more that they stay here, they run the risk of taking a fight level down level 20. And that might be what's happening here. Jumping onto the, the new Brack. Don't want to spread for the Chain Bomb. Good job. I would really like to see Calculated Throw take these Knights. So that way they can put some pressure. You, you know, let the Knights run down mid. Let's look at this experience gain. So, Kael'thas is actually beating Zagar. Granted, Kael'thas has been rotating around, so that's a little unfair. Looking at the ex does this show experience? It does. So Zagara actually does have the most experience done. Because she's been in the solo lane. Man, just Lubu is just on point with his delays. They're just not allowing anybody from Calculated Throw to be able to turn in, but they're re-engaging. Down level 10. One ultimate is down from the, the Kael'thas. Or actually, an Avatar going uh, out from the Muradin. All in all, a pretty good trade for Calculated Throw, knowing that two ultimates came out for no kills. And full level 10 is available for Calculated Throw now. Alright, so what are they going to do? How are they going to turn in? Zagara versus Nubrak on the bottom. Chawana is trying to pressure top. It looks like they're probably going to be looking for some kills. They do want to try to force a fight since they know that two ultimates were out for Lubu. Looking for the Zagara. Not quite getting there. Looks like there's going to be a big scuffle here. 
This should be in favor of Calculated Throw. Let's see how it goes. Just a lot of poking right now. Zakara still defending that bot lane. They're not able to go in there. So Anubrax trying to sneak in. Oh, is he going to get it? Does Kael'thas see it in time? Oh, barely gets it in time. But good on that Anubarak to uh, to not cancel the the channel time. Just in case they might jive in with that Breath of... Uh, man, what is that called? Breath of Fire coming out. Doing a lot of damage to him. Finishing off the kill on Rhaegar. That's a good fear. Nice fear bringing off the Joanna away. With the Earthquake keeping him in there. And they're still delaying. They lose Rhaegar and they're still in here. But they are determined to get this. They definitely will now. So, second Web Weavers finally going to Calculated Throw. Let's see what they can do with it. Gul'dan's pretty low on mana, but he has Life Tap. And... Look, reduce cooldown on Health Funnel, so that way he can uh, drain life for the minions and get it back instantly. Looking to push out the top lane the most. Probably going to leave Zagara to clear the other lanes. They are gonna defend, uh, Luba will defend with four. Big fight chain bomb coming out. Doing a good job spreading to make sure that they're not spreading the chain bomb. Oh, spreading their heroes so they're not spreading chain bomb. Honestly, this KT has just been a nuisance the whole time. And Newbrack's looking for the Zagara, but she's able to get away. And now there's five man top. We have Thrall in the bot lane, still kind of pushing in that minion lane. Minion wave. Barely any wall damage on the top lane. I mean, it was, it was a... Easy clear for Lubu on all on all accounts. Big corruption stacks done, hitting a lot of people. Rhaegar's pretty good at healing it, but once the once those six stacks start hitting people, it's gonna be tough. All right, so they were able to get one gate, two gates out of their wall. They almost have a turn in again, but Lubu also does. Both teams are an even talent tier, so they can either choose to fight here. Ultimates available for everybody. The next team fight is actually going to be really huge. Because if Calculated Throw wins, they're going to be able to turn in right away from just the gem counts alone. And if Lubu wins, they get. Uh, they already have the bot lane down. They'll be able to push top lane with the wall down. Start putting pressure on the boss lane. It almost seems like every time Lubu comes in to. Interrupt. They a uh, new break. Well, you know they start diving into it. It's like, hey, you have to step out to do this interrupt. Let's just. I'm just gonna engage here. Hey, Ghost Dunk. Thanks for the raid. 37. Welcome everybody else that came from that uh, party. We're in game number one of this Division D East game. Got an interesting draft from both teams, kind of copying each other. But Division. Well, Lubu is just, they're now they're at the point where they're putting the pressure on to Calculate to say, hey, you guys need to interrupt us, walk up to us, try to see what you can do. Let's see if they can jump into this Kalthos and Newbrex looking for it. They have all five here. There's Dragon Form available. All ultimates are available. Basically, every te both teams are just looking to go back and forth. Oh, no. They left Bandit alone. Gul'dan Gold left. And they're definitely going to get it in. All right, Web Weaver number two for Lubu. Both teams on even talent tiers. Let's look at the talents for level thirteen. We get the Earth Shield. Ooh, looking on the cigar now. We got the full double stun. Diablo's coming in with the flip root. Good combo. Big Maw comes out, but they're all gonna come out of it. No problem. Actually, gets a heal coming out of it as well. That's actually huge. Zagar was the main reason they took the bot fort in the first push. First Web Weaver. So getting her out of the fight now makes it a little easier to clear all lanes. They might look to re-engage here. I mean, there's a cool dance in the bot lane. They still have all the ultimates available. Newbrack went in there deep. Got <clears throat> Life Binder came out on the Diablo, getting a full heal. Earthquake went out as well. Basically traded everybody's alt for everybody else's alt. Oh, I just realized we have Locust Swarm. We don't even have... Um, Cocoon, Gul'dan cool getting caught out. That's a little unfortunate. That was your main source of wave clear. Lightning Breath. Why was it Breath of Fire? God, man. Um, I'm going to take some of those caster flashcards. Ooh, I don't think they want this fight. They don't have their healer. Try and delay as much as possible. It's 4v5 still. Especially without their main DPS. 
A new Brax going in there, but he does no mana, and he just, he just uses Burrow in. He just has to walk away. Lightning Breath going out just to try to delay them. Unfortunately, it was not enough. And Diablo might pay for it as well, but gets the regen globe to essentially go to full health. Actually, he didn't go that talent, but it still gives him a lot of health. Don't change. Not trying not to spread the chain bomb. I mean, all in all, that was still a, an effective defense. I mean, they already had Bot Fort down. Lubu already had Bot Fort down, so they didn't really gain anything else. They were able to defend. Calculated Throw was able to defend top. And they only got about a half level lead, so if there's enough delay to make even talent tiers, Calculated Throw will be able to get another turn in. Let's looking at these talents. Kalefaust is up to 26. Murden has forced away from his stacks. That will make him a lot more deadly. Trying to jump onto the Joanna. Honestly, I think they were just trying to delay him. Trying to stop him from uh, delaying the turn in. Ooh, Kael'thas might be jumped out too far. They're looking for Nice fear. Get him into the fight. But a huge maw hitting on the two people. Their main DPS. But they're still looking at that Kael'thas. Lightning Breath coming on top of him. Finally get the kill. Earthquake still slowing everybody else. But Alex dies in the back line without being able to use her Life Binder or her Dragon Form. That's a big deal. But that means that she still has it for the next fight. Diablo's still looking for it. They have no healer. But granted, most of these people can all self-heal anyways. Is stream down? It shouldn't be. Uh, oh, oops. I haven't dropped any frames. Try to refresh, Southerly Elf. So, only need eight gems for a calculated throw. Raid the snag! Thanks, Bobo. Alright, so... Even though the team fight they lost Kael'thas for Alexstrasza, I mean, Lubu was still like, you know, we still have our healer, we're still going to keep pushing, which is smart, uh, smart play. They're making sure they get the well out, they don't have that available to heal when they do these little skirmishes. They might be looking to force the top fight fort. Now the question is, does Calculated Throw give the top fort and try to get a turn in, or they do the defend? It looks like they are trying to go for the turn in. Hopefully Zagara doesn't get ganked, okay. Yeah, they're just going to succumb the turn in. Oh my god, they're going to delay because Zagara is so annoying. But does she pay for it? She does not pay for it. And now they're going to turn. Thrall still wants to try to get the turn in. They're just delaying for as much as long as possible to get Thrall the turn in. As long as nobody dies, then they're good. Lifebinder coming out to save the Nubrak. There's still Dragon Form available. Big Flame Strike's coming out. We got the double Flame Strike with the extra damage at 13. So now they have Web Weavers. This gives Calculated Throw the chance to even out these lanes. What can they do with them this time? They only have the mid web weavers that's out far over this time. Kael'thas is able to do work with the wave clear on his double flame strike. Joanna actually already used her trait. She could be punished for that. Big flame strike damage is doing work right on top of the, the web weaver. And everybody is so healthy on for Lubu, whereas everybody is so hurt for calculated throw. For literally just from Kael'thas. Some Kael'thas poke is all it takes. And they just... They're really going to need to look to just dive right on top of it. They had the idea the first time looking for the the, the stun follow-ups and the fear. Try to isolate that Kael'thas, get him out of the fight, and I think it looks a lot better for him. So now, suggesting to push bottom with this last web weaver. Pick up as many gems as they can, but they're going to succumb. So now it's essentially even forts, even experience. Granted, Calculated Throw's top fort is essentially a whisper from death, from destruction. Um, but the experience is not there yet for Lubu. Ooh, are they looking for a bush? Who goes in first? They're all scared. Joanna checks the other bush. So that's the tank. And all throws out the Ghost Wolf. Barrel Spirit. The guard are looking to sneak the bottom giants. Nobody's checking. There is now a turn in for Lubu. With the giant pressure on bottom, I think this is going to give them an easy way to be in the for Lubu to go into the top lane. But Newbrack's looking for the Rhaegar. Fear goes out, misses everybody. 
unfortunate the use of that. Her uh, but they might still push here. Joanna gets a turn in. There's giants pushing bottom, so Lubu will want to pressure the top turn in point, because that way it lets the giants do work. Earthquake's coming out looking like a big team fight. Blessed Shield coming out. Here comes Dragon Form this time to try to do a lot of damage. Earthquake is still slowing everybody. They're still looking at the Kael'thas. Lightning Breath coming out, but an Ancestral lands at the last second onto the Kael'thas. Same with the Life Finder on the Thrall. Turning their turn faces to the Anubarak who burrows away. Try not to spread the Chain Bomb. Good job on Scooter Man. And all in all, everybody walks away with full health and nobody dies. That is a double comp, double tank meta for you. Zagara getting flipped, turned away. So the rest of this team wasn't there. Diablo might be scared a little bit now, but he should just be able to walk away. Honestly, these flame strikes just negated all that healing. Giants did work in bot lane, and now there's web weavers that are going to push all the way down there. Granted, these should be the easiest web weavers to clear. But, you know, so they're going to leave a new Brack in the top lane. We haven't seen talents in a while, so let's check out the talents. Dragon Queen duration. Thrall is getting a little bit in trouble. Blessed Shield's available. It can come out here. Decides not to use it. But a lot of damage from the Kael'thas. These Kael'thas flame strikes are just... They're just demolishing the other team. Looking at the damage here. Kael'thas is at 63. Gul'dan's only at 51. Zagara's actually not too far behind of the Kael'thas. Big Life Binder coming out to heal Gul'dan. Still, once again, looking at the Kael'thas, he does end up dying. Even with two members of the backline in a maw. And they're looking to re-engage. Web Reaver ends up getting a keep, but at least it wasn't the game. This allows them to clear up the rest of the Web Reavers. And, but level 20 for... Lubu. The rewind from Rhaegar. But actually the... Group shield, trying to make sure that he can keep his Kael'thas alive even more. So Kael'thas is just going to be that much harder to kill. And wet rewind from the Murden. We actually got Tempest Fury from the Thrall. Not even going for the lightning build poke since there is the double front line. You know, there hasn't been any boss play at all. Granted, the teams haven't really had a position to have an advantage in numbers to take a boss. But Sigara has been able to check it. The card is such a nuisance. She's looking for it. Gets one stun. The rest of the team is still too far behind. And Lubu comes to rescue. Let's see, Kael'thas is at 35 stacks, so his, his self shield is pretty hefty now. There's no there is a turn in for calculated throw. No turn in for Lubu. Calculated throw needs to be looking to get the level 20. You need to send somebody bot lane to clear out those catapults, maybe take the knights, so that way you have that. Matt Pressure looking for the Maw on the Thrall barely scoots away. Let's see what I did there. Now they're going to be looking to, to wave to clear. With the level 20s, I mean, Lubu could probably force these knights. It's a pretty risk move just because level 20 is so close for Calculated Throw and actually just gets reached. So let's look at those talents. We got the Shield Earthquake making everybody a little bit healthy, uh, stronger. The longer lasting lightning breath. I don't know if you guys have played with that. I only just recently kind of played with the new lightning breath, the long lightning breath. It is forever long. But here's a team fight. Alex Rosa was actually not able to click her level 20 before this team fight, which is huge because that extra life binder is basically makes somebody impossible to die. Un really unfortunate they picked this fight before she took her talent, but it's still kind of going pretty well. A lot of flame strike damage, a lot of living bomb damage, and once again, nobody dies. Duke of Sky says, what the fuck, we'll dance 16. I think that is actually probably the correct choice, given the other team comp. Alright, so both teams level 20. They're still trying to save this mid-keep. They still, I mean, Calculated Throw still has a turn-in. It's just going to be hard. Since they have no map control right now, it's going to be incredibly hard for them to try to sneak that in. Like, they're really going to be looking to win a team fight here. With these knights, are they going to be able to save this keep? Lifebinder just came online again, so at least you'll have the level 20 version this time. We have Blessed Shield, Phoenix, Maul, all available. Lightning Breath for another 7 seconds, Fear for another 5. So this fight can happen directly after this, but they will lose the keep. And honestly, they got poked out pretty hard. Alright, so... 
what can these teams do right now? I mean, calculated throw, their only choice is to really try to get this turn in, to try to push out these lanes, help them push out these lanes for them. See this Zugara. If the Zugara shows, we'll probably see this new right burrow in. She does not. Okay. Zagara is just enough with her long range to be able to delay. They're going to let Thrall turn in by himself because he has it all on his own, which was smart. It was Alex Straza getting a little out of position. They're looking for the team fight. The new Brax coming in. Gets stunned by the Blessed Shield. Looking for the flip on the uh, Kathos. The big lightning breath coming out, but they still don't have Gul'dan yet. The huge life binder coming out, so Diablo is not going to die. The, a lot of ultimates came out for that with nothing to show for it. I mean, on every on both teams. So it's just it's always just so back and forth with these team fights. They engage on somebody, but they're just not able to kill them. It's a little unfortunate. Maybe if they had the Gul'dan there when they engaged, might have been a different story. But now they at least have... Wait, the Web Weavers actually died bot lane from those giants by itself. That actually is really unfortunate for Calculated Throw, because that means those catapults are soon going to have two catapults plus giants on their core. If Lubu is able to... If they realize it, and Lubu is able to hold them here long enough without dying, Gul'dan is end up going back. Okay. So as soon as they see Gul'dan on that back line, on that Mercs, they should be pretty aggressive here. Looks like Zagara is getting out of position. The Zagara and the Kael'thas, the stun from the new Brack was missed, but Thrall was able to finish the kill. The Mike to recon look into the Kael'thas again, getting stunned by the Stormbolt from Muradin, slowing him down a little bit. Flame Breath coming out, big life binder on the new Brack. He's going to look to re-engage, but... It is still only a 4v4, and once again, Kael'thas is barely... Oh my god, Scooter Man, you shouldn't be alive. These flame strikes are doing work. A huge uh, fear, though, to save Gravette. Murden's able to pop Avatar with the Ancestral, and he's not dying anytime soon. Fortunately, the Webweaver... Nice. Earthquake with the shield able to save Gul'dan, but he's still in trouble. Next Earthquake coming in. That was an engaging fight. But luckily for Calculated Throw, the Web Weavers were able to take the top keep. So now that it is a keep for keep down. So there's going to be catapult pressure on top, catapult pressure for Lubo on bottom. Uh, this can really go either way, honestly. This is, this is pretty even. <laughs> Mid lane is the easiest to defend because everybody likes to run down mid lane. It really comes down to the team fights. It's just that these team fights are just, they're lasting for forever and nobody's dying. And when they do die, they just, it's only one person. So you can't really get a clear advantage. It's really going to be interesting to see how these, how either team finishes off, honestly. Neither team has a turn in. Nope, nope, now Calculator Throw has another turn in. But will they be able to get it in? Will they be able to secure the gems as tribute for the Spider Queen? Ooh, they're looking at Alexstrasza. Big flame strike coming out. She still has Dragon Form, I believe. She does not have Dragon Form. Yes, yeah, she does. There's a Life Binder, keeping herself alive and the other person. Newbrek gets interrupted, ends up falling for it. Diablo is in that back line, trying to use his flame breath, uh, lightning breath. It's end up going to maybe die? He does not die. What a champ. Big Murden stun's coming out. Now the dragon form's coming. Make sure that they, you can't push into the core. This is basically a desperate plea to defense at this point. Flame strikes are still doing a huge work. Alex draws is so low. Ends up going to the core. If anybody dies here, if Thrall ends up falling, they can Lubu can probably core. They still there is still a dragon, but a five and at this late of the stage, holy crap, Murden, honestly, they're just chunking the core. They have three catapults, so GG, game number one, going to Lubu. Well, that was ridiculous. Let's see what those stats are. So we have... Kael'thas with a hefty... Hefty 150,000, 60,000 higher than the next person, which is his own teammate at Zagara at 92, which is great. Um, but man, uh, the Kalthos was doing work. 
So that is game number one underway. Let's bring it to game number two. This is going to be Towers of Doom, picked by Lubu, who just won game number one. So let's see if they have a plan for Towers of Doom. And so I'm going to be right back for while I get the lobby set up. So stay with me.
towers of doom. Well, I forgot to switch scenes to the webcam in between this because, you know, I'm rusty at this, haven't done anything since season four. But either way, right on to game number two on Towers of Doom, picked by Lubu, giving first pick the calculated throw. Right off the bat, ban of the Kalthos. So, like I said before, the first round, neither both of these teams are fresh to NGS. This is their first time playing. They don't they don't know about each other from season four. There's no previous stats to look at. They're only looking at, you know, what games they played. But they know now from that last game they do not want to deal with Kalthos. So that is the straight up respect ban. <laughs> Always feels good as a player when you get respect ban, but you're like, oh come on, I wanted to play Kalthos again. Lubu once again banning out the Azanan, uh, another big global map for him. Kind of can just be annoying, a big long range mage. Will calculate throw a ban out the Chromie. They do. So, mimic from first draft, from game number one. So, this time, is there going to be a respect ban from Lubu? Was there anybody that they got scared of? Professor Bobo, Lubu. Yeah, so I was, th I've been thinking that the whole time from Dynasty Warriors, Lubu from Dynasty Warriors. Honestly, every single time I say it, I think of it. I'm glad you said that. Um, but Lubu once again banning out the Ana, and this time Jimmy's actually gonna get picked up since he was not banned by calculated throw this time. So let's see how, uh, let's see how some Pepper feels for for Lubu with some of that uh, that new fresh Jimmy rework. Now this is another big global map. Uh, you have a, a lot of times you're having people with burrow, having people with flies is, is really strong. But Lubu sticking with the tried and true Joanna plus mage. <laughs> Joanna, one of those big, just a beefy frontliner, can just run at people. You know, good enough that she also has a blind for Rainer, so that helps out. And then followed up with the Jaina. Um, J Blessed Shield gives good a good starting point for Ring. Uh, Arthas popping out here now, and this time calculated throw picking up the Rhaegar. There is totem. I mean, Rhaegar has the ability to put out that totem that slows, helps the the Rainer. Arthas slows everybody that he's next to, so that helps the Rainer. So they're really pushing this Rainer, acing the whole damage to try to just melt people down. And this time, Lubu at banning out the Anubarak. Uh, knowing that they did, that Calculated Throw pulled out the double tank last game. Calculated Throw getting rid of one of Rainer's, you know, quote unquote soft counters with the Cassia with another blind. They don't want to make sure Rainer has the ability to actually do damage. But Lubu's like, nah, man, we don't want you to do that. Plus, we're also going to pick Diablo once again with the double tank. <clears throat> so that way we can jump on top of Rainer and just ignore Arthas altogether. So does Calculator Throw pick up the Muradin so they have the double tank? I don't know. Do they pick up the Haka because the Haka is amazing on this map? Or rather really good on this map. Yorel is still available. They do end up going with the Blaze. Uh, gives a good bunker or you know if they want to go to Combustion that's okay too. And the Li Ming to kind of give them some burst some burst damage, so now they, it's, which is really good because they're going against Lili that does not have burst healing. So if they are able to Get somebody low enough where it's in between Lily's little drink and Lemmy can come in with that big burst of damage and try to get a reset and move on and so forth. Now, granted, you're trying to reset against tanks and two very beefy, very beefy frontline tanks, so it could be very tough. And Lubu rounding it out with the Junkrat to get somebody out of place. Now, I like it, honestly. Junkrat, once again, another map where you want to poke people on the objective, just like Tomb of the Spider Queen. Junkrat has long range poke. Every four seconds, you can do four of them, so it's really strong. And Joel, Arthas and Blaze are they're just in there. Like Arthas has to run at you, so it's a very easy target to bomb. Uh, to what's it called? I mean, to do his bomb. I'm going to have to do those flashcards. <laughs> What's up with the Ana ban? It's Ana secretly broken. Only yeah, maybe. I mean, I'm I'm willing to bet that they're doing some scouting of their profiles. Maybe this person's got like an 80% win rate. Maybe Gravan's got like an 80% win rate in Ana, and you know, or maybe she's OP. But yeah, the way like I was saying, I think Junkrat's got a really good ability here to create a lot of disruption 
on to calculate a throw to bomb people away. If Arthas gets on top of him, he'll just push them all out. Prepare yourself for battle. So let's get into game number two. Will Calculator Throw be able to even it out? We got on the left hand side for Lubu, we got Bandit on the Jaina, VDZ on the Junkrat, Streak Wing on the Lily, Alan Hicks on the Giovanna once again, and Macrota on the Diablo. On the right hand side, Calculator Throw, Ninja Elephant on the Blaze, Strugans on the Arthas, Scooterman on the Rainer, Gravent on the Rhaegar, and Mystic on the Five, four, <clears throat> Li Ming. Three, two. Quick look well, at the level 1 talents. Jaina's going for the full Frostbolt range. Being able to slow that Arthas makes it really hard for Arthas to try to get on top of anybody. Going out the oil a little early, ends up lighting it. Junkrat placing the first bomb, let's see if anybody walks into it. One stack for Arthas, that's always a, a, a plus. Now Arthas is going to create some pretty... Wait, hold the phone. We got Rhaegar going top by himself. Saying, screw you guys, I don't even want to heal you, I'm going to get some lane soak. Just don't take any damage. So we got Arthas on the bot lane against the Junkrat. He has self heal, but with this poke from Junkrat, unless he's able to get on top of Junkrat like that, then he's not really going to be able to create any threat. The block from the Joanna, just because there's a Rainer, actually waiting in the bushes here, looking for that engage. There it is, trying to jump onto the Rainer. One blind coming out, second blind coming out. Blaze getting a big stun. They're actually going to turn this around with that stun. And Bandit's getting quite low. Looking for, he's looking for that bomb. Oh, barely dodges it. Let's see how this top lane is going. Because Rhaegar Gravent is just saying he does not want to heal the teams. He doesn't even want those heal numbers. Um, He's literally at zero healing right now. And Arthas... Ends up going down, getting poked out by the Junkrat. Hopefully we can see some rotations down here. Concussion mine. Yes, you are correct. Both teams getting the Merc Camp, so this is very important on this map, taking these Merc Camps. Being able to control the bot lane is so crucial for the flow of the game. Because like once you're able to control this lane with the constant merc pressure, if you're able to if you're able to get a fort and get those merc pressures pre pressing on the kill zone with getting those free shots, um, also it stops a lot of rotations into these areas. I don't have my mouse pointer available, so you won't be able to see where I'm looking. But essentially, it can allows you to control a lot of rotations. Rhaegar once again up top lane now probably has some healing numbers. Update 36, that's good. Finally, I think we're going to see Arthas rotate up to Diablo, which is probably the best choice for them, so that way they have Gravent able to heal the rest of their team. Nice Root. He's up to five, getting the first stack of it, getting a lot of slows. Honestly, I think Blaze would be the best up here. This is the slowest, and the blind is actually going to save him. Feels good for Streak Wing, barely gets him out. Bot lane, two people just gonna be this is gonna be a poke war if I've ever seen one. I don't think anybody's taking this. But I guess seeing that, they're basically <clears throat> Lu Bu is like, I'm just gonna we're just gonna jump on you. Strugans has got no mana. Do they trade it? Do they have another interrupt? Looks like they do not. But does Strugan die for it? Uh I guess he doesn't. And calculated throw with the Rainer jumping down bottom was able to get that bottom uh bell tower. We got full lightning shield build from Rhaegar. Going the behemoth armor against double tank. I guess that's fair. You're always gonna. It's easy to get some stacks off of them. So what I'd really like to see here is I'd really like to see calculated throw. Just keep Blaze up top. Ooh, this is a bait. No, Strugans, don't fall for it. Run away. Oh no. Okay, he gets out. But I'd really like to see the Blaze stay top. Honestly, Blaze can try to do some double rotations if, if he feels up to it. You know, soak one lane, run down here, soak a second lane, and back and forth. But Blaze is going to be your best solo laner. He has the self-heal, he has a lot of wave clear. Arthas enables Raynor. Rhaegar enables Raynor. I would really like to see those two heroes with their Raynor at all times. And then just make that an oppressive three-man force. 
But they decided to switch it up a little bit. Now Rhaegar is going down to the Rainer, so that does help. Arthas going up top against three of them. Oh, no, never mind. They're going to go to camps again. Like I said earlier, camps are pretty crucial. Both teams hitting level 7 now. Let's see what they take. Opting out of the Frostbolt Pierce. Ooh, seeing two top. Arthas got the vision on top. Rhaegar, I mean, Jonkrat's still doing a lot of poke. We're going to have the Joanna come down, rotate. But, yep, yeah, they're suddenly saying, never mind, we don't want to risk this right before Bell Towers and give up our lead. So we're going to continuously poke this. I mean, Li Ming's got great poke. Rainer's getting a little bit, got caught out by the Diablo. Great follow-up by Bandit with the Blizzard being able to kill the Rhaegar. And that's a lot of their damage being knocked out. This is the time where you probably just leave two people up here to delay and have somebody sneak down bottom. It looks like that's where Gravent's trying to go or just trying to heal up Mystic. Actually, are they just... Are they pushing this out with just Li Ming or, and Blaze and Arthas? Man, they are in there. Fight's still going on. Junkrat was trying to delay the bot mercs. Rhaegar in there doing some damage. Li Ming... I mean, so last game it was the Arthas... Oh, not there, it was the Kael'thas stopping everybody from doing anything. Now it's the Li Ming. Big stun. Rainer is now back in the fight. The delay was long enough that Rainer is back full health. Blaze ends up not dying. Do they get the... They should... Leeming should easily have interrupt here. Actually barely got it. And Rainer's going to finish up the kill. Great pickup for Calculated Throw. And actually getting... God overlay. Thanks, Ghost Hunt. I have this nice new stream deck, and I still forget to hit the buttons. Man, I'm good. Well, so for those of you that couldn't see the talents because I had the wrong overlay up, because it is the first week of casting, here are the talents. Take a look at them pretty quick. Alright, so 36 shots to 24. Now this is a game that can go, I mean, a map like this, Early shots don't matter as much. It's the late game that matters. You, if you get to the point where you can control the bot lane, if you can control the towers, the actual forts being taken, you can actually come back from a a deficit of like you know four shots left. I have seen it done because I have had it happen to me. It was the most intense game I think I've ever played because we were down. We had four shots left and came back and almost won, but ended up dying because of a choke ball. Blessed Shield coming out, looking to engage here. Not much comes out of it, but just making sure that they can get their um, sappers in. This time there's only a single. Oh, Blessed Shield didn't go out. There's only a single bell tower this time, so this is going to be a big full on full fight. We got Lightning Breath, we got Rip Tire, Ring of Frost, and Jugs. Rainer's Raiders should be coming up in 10 seconds. Looks like they're going to be a little bit invade. There is four people down here to the favor of Lubu. A huge Blush of Shield with the Rip Tire. Actually going to get a double kill. What a god! The Rip Tire knocked him into the Ring of Frost, and they got... Oh, man. Everybody's going into the bunker. We got Jugs came out. There's still a Rainer here actually doing a lot of damage. Bunker stomping him. There's the Junkrat bomb. He's going to get knocked back. He does not get knocked back. Junkrat forgot his bomb was there. But the Rip Tired bomb knocked into the Ring of Frost. What a play. But showing some life for Lubu. Like I said, this can come back. There's his, The game is 100% nowhere near over. A lot of game left to play. And if there's anything from the first game, is that this will be very back and forth. Joanna opting to rotate top lane to get a little bit of lane soak. Keep their level lead. So I really, again, like I said before, for Calculated Throw, if you come back and rewatch this, please, please, please put your Blaze in the top lane, run around with your Arthas and a Rhaegar, and um, I think this game would go swimmingly for you. Alright, so just do some poking. Everybody's kind of going back to their little PvP. Only three times Bobo? I don't believe that in a second. 
All right, almost level 13s for Lubu. Oh, Rainer. Luckily, the Raider does get vision, but with the Diablo coming in, you're gonna run right into this wall. There it is, nice charge, followed up with a blizzard. Nice kill for Lubu. And again, once again, right on time with the Bell Tower. Granted, Rainer will be alive by the time the Bell Tower pops, but he'll have some run time, but they'll be able to poke enough. I just realized Bloodlust. We haven't seen it yet. Rhaegar has been kind of doing his own thing, but we do have a Rainer. We do have an Arthas and a Blaze. Like, Bloodlust could be pretty huge. So they're <clears throat> calculated throw, opting to give up the bot Bell Tower. Unfortunately, that means they might give up this bot fort. Like, and like I said at the very beginning, this bot fort is crucial for control of this map. Yeah, there's five men here. I mean, they have to give it up. Yeah, so they have some, I mean, they have some sappers pushing top, so that'll give them the top wall. We got level 13's hit for both teams. We got Giddy up. Cannoneer from the Li Ming, interesting. Looking at this five man fight, fight here. It's 5v5. They don't have Junkrat yet for Lubu. They can re engage here. Arthas is looking for it. Are we going to see the Bloodlust? Rhaegar is way in the back. Jugs comes out. Big stun. Big roots in three people. Do we have the bunker? Bloodlust comes out. There goes the bunker. Still able to get some damage, but they lost Arthas pretty quick. He actually was not able to get his ghouls out. Nice on Crack Concussion Mind. Knock him away. Blaze coming up with the charge. I mean, there's still plenty of. Li Ming and Rhaegar and uh, Rainer damage coming out. Oh no, they had to run down to the fort. That slows. Okay, I think they get away. But this is what I was talking about. So like now they're getting free shots. Potentially getting free shots. They get one, two shots in? One no shots in. So they did they were able to clear it up, but that's the big thing here. So now every time Calculated Throw wants to rotate to a bell tower, they have to run right here. And then this gives a free choke point to, to wrap around for Lubu. Heroes, I have opened a tunnel near our core that leads to the battlegrounds. So full level lead for Lubu. Well? There's now two bell towers. So keep in mind, at the very beginning, they were 10, uh, Calculated Throw were 10 shots up. And see how quickly it turns. Take a little bit of map pressure. But they're going to give up two bell towers here once again. They might looks like Chunkrat has a great interrupt on the blaze. Might pay for his life, might not because the slow from Bandit is enough to keep him alive. Popping ghouls, are they gonna look to fight here? That's a big cooldown. Looks like no. Oh, Arthas is so close to finishing his talent too. He needs one more. Chunkrat bomb is out. Are they gonna knock anybody away? Oh, just barely missed that. Arthas wants that. Does knock him away. The Arthas wants that uh, quest complete. Strugans. Alright, even talent tier. Oh, even talent tier's a little bit half a level lead. Oh, look at this little. Look at this little res person. I didn't realize that before. Look at that. They don't res over there. But we got a team fight going on. We got Bloodlust. And immediately got a kill. With the Ring of Frost and two people in the back line, but Joanna got melted. Arthas is in there, does not have ghouls, so we'll end up not dying. Unfortunately, okay, good. I was about to say, if that tower, if that minion dies, and Arthas dies afterwards. Rainer is up to only on nine stacks of his behemoth armor. I wonder if the other talents might have been a little bit more effective. I mean, granted, you got the extra 200 health on the passive, so I mean, it's always a good bonus. Fifteen to fifteen. Now that the experience has gone, the lead of calculated throw only down by three shots. Not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. Ultimates are down for both teams for a little bit. There is no bloodlust, which is a lot of the healing for calculated throw. We still got ghouls and we still got bunker, which is our really big cooldowns. Ah, uh, this Rainer might be stepping out a little too far. They aggro the boss. That's a big deal. All right, this finally finished the uh, and the last team fight finally finished the talent. 
They're looking to keep fighting in this. Probably not the best position fighting into a choke point with Junkrat and <coughs> Jaina, but they opt to ba back out of it. Oh, I just realized that people messaged me on Discord to change overlays, so thank you, Bobo and Cersei. What are these teams going to do now? 16 reached for Kakai to throw. 16 barely just now reached for Lubu. Arthas just being a pest. Joanna, they just saw Joanna bot. Picking a, picking a Riptar out right away. Blaze has Bunker, as actually the self-field. Another big Ring of Frost hitting two members. Bla Blaze actually just barely got away from it. Jug's coming out. No other stuns to interrupt Jug's. Everybody's in the bunker. But everybody's actually gonna die coming out of the bunker. Nice charge to get away. Arthas is still in a bad spot with those blizzards coming in. Getting some armor, but not enough to save him with the Diablo overcharge. Once more. And they're just going to push this fort out. I mean, it's a little hard to push this in since there is a Raynor in the Li Ming. Li Ming is one of the best defenders because of her long range damage. Jo Jaina actually opted to get the long cast range blizzard and the radius. So basically, <clears throat> Bandit was like, you banned out my Kel'thas. I still want to play with long range, big AoE spells. So she went to the blizzard. Blaze. Running out there, getting caught out. Unfortunately, does not have bunker yet, and is staggering to death. It's not what you want to see. This is going to be two bell towers going to Lubu, bringing them down to six. Not much they can that calculated throw can do here. Arthur still wants to be a best. For anybody that hasn't paid attention to the talents yet. Junkrat's sitting at 106 on the stacks. Everybody could be caught in this rotation. Oh, barely. If uh, Joanna had kind of interrupted somebody there. They're looking to run around as five. Alright, so what can they do? Calculated Throw is looking to get somebody caught out. They have Blaze coming in from the back line. We got one trap on the Arthas. They'll see them coming in. They're looking for this wrap. They're looking for a team fight. I mean, they want to fight right away. They want to stop these mercs from going in. Big team fight, another big root hitting three members, and the Rip Tar immediately blowing out the Leeming. And the Arthas. Not able to get into the bunker in time. Blaze might die as well. I mean, Rainer's still doing a lot of damage in the back line. They're all really hurt but just not enough to kill him. It's unfortunate that that Ring of Frost has been, literally, I think all of the rings this game have hit two to three members. Riptire following up with a blow up. I mean, they're just deleting them. You better hurry. The altars rise again. Oh, so Lubu's looking at the boss, two down. They take this boss very quick. They can fight to the bottom tower as well and that can give them game. Looking for that end game. And I don't think there's, I mean, um, Calculated Throw will have enough people up. This is going to be critical for Calculated Throw to defend this bottom bell tower. They might be able to get it right away. They might just be able to take it. I don't think Junkrat, they did try to rotate Junkrat down to try to get some delays, but he's not going to be able to. So it was a nice idea. It was, it was a great idea. Still puts Calculated Throw down to two. It, you are not over yet, Calculated. You can still win. Forts are all up. Pretty much any team fight that goes either way can secure the game, the remaining game. Granted, a little bit more leeway for Lubu, but not level 20s yet, still about a level and a half away. Ooh, Arthur's running into there, Trait going after Joanna. Okay, they're deciding not to fight it. Everybody's just kind of posturing around. Jaina's getting that long range blizzard in to get some, make sure that it gets damaged. Basically, Jaina's able to play super safe, deal, staying away from the Rainer, staying away from the Arthas, being able to throw these blizzards to follow up on the Diablo and the Joanna. So it's worked out for him. 
Granted, she has to step up to throw cast the, the Ring of Frost, and the Ring of Frost have been on point. At this point, so like you're trying, like calculated throw is trying to catch up on experience. They don't want to have that situation where they're not going to be anywhere near close to twenty when it comes to the next troop, uh, next bell tower. And the next bell tower spawn is a single one. So I mean, granted, neither twenty team is going to be twenty. I think unless. Lubu can get this bottom four with these mercs. Arthas? Oh, luckily, uh, Junkrat did not pop his bomb. I think everybody's gonna be defending. This is in a tough spot. You either defend the be the fort to not give up 20, but somebody's gotta defend the bell tower to make sure they don't give up the game. The Looks like they got a little bit of fire going into the delay. Ar Junkrat's gonna be constantly trying to poke. Oh, they're gonna get it. Barely big Ring of Frost coming out. There's the Bloodlust as well. Rainer's just coming in with that damage, but the Rip Tire is looking for the Li Ming. Unfortunately, if he had gone for any of the tanks, they probably would have died. Li Ming still dies to Junkrat, and holy cow, the damage is just a bloodbath. Rainer is just, I mean, he's doing so much damage, but he's just not able to kill anybody in the back line. Honestly, he was able to do whatever he wanted, but that looks to be game number two going to Lubu. A lot, of, a lot of team fights back and forth. Like all the other. So congratulations to Lubu on their first NGS match win. Congratulations. And, I mean, it, well done, honestly. They had two uh, really good games. Uh, they were calculated in their fight taking, based on a lot of poke, and then picking their targets to blow up. So they earned it. Uh, looking at these teams, it was 13 to 3. I actually thought Calculated Throw got a little bit more kills than that, but uh, they're Junkrat and Jaina. Once again, I mean, they're two assassins. They're doing work. They're following up on the Jana. They had great Ring of Frost along with the Reptires. And we're going to see if we can get somebody in here. We'll hold the phone for one second. We're going to see if we can get an interview. <clears throat> so, as I said before, both teams, congratulations to Lubu, congratulations to Calculated Throw for your first showing in NGS. Hope you had fun. Obviously, you got two more games this round to go through, so don't count yourselves out. A lot more games to be played. Oh, Shriek Wing, you in? Yes. Yes, there you are. All right. So, well, c straight up, congratulations to game number for your first game ever at NGS. Congratulations for the win. How does that feel? Feels good. They were close games. They were fun. Yeah, they were. They were definitely close. It was back and forth on that towers on the um, Tomb of the Spider Queen game. Honestly, it was. It was. I didn't really know. It was, was kind of go. Super safe game. That's why no one did boss, right? Like it, it was rare. More than one was dead. Like <laughs> yeah, out of the team fights, only one person would die, and then you'd be like, "Oh, time to split up and do our own thing." <laughs> but uh, so I got to ask. So in both games here, we're seeing a double tank meta, like double, like double mm -hmm. frontline meta. Is do you guys see that a lot in your hero league games and your team league ga team league games? And yeah, that's 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 just more of like the the type of people that are on team Lulu. Like that's just. The people they play we have a lot of people that main front line really and okay. it, uh, it works pretty well for us yeah it's one of the reasons we'll pick something like uh like kalthos it's like it's impossible to get to him sometimes yeah he was able to just, have the, the double peels yeah, he was able to just dish out damage back there uh, especially once we hit 20 it was it was it was nice and safe for him yeah <laughs> So you guys, so no, more often than not, you see this type of meta coming out with the double heavy front line being playing pretty safe. Um, so going into game two 
like do you guys in the towers of doom do you guys have a lot of practice with those ring of frost because i mean your jaina was landing them like crazy like really securing a lot of the team fights with these ring of frost and then following up with the rip tire do you guys end up t- t- taking a lot of practice to f- um do these specific combos i mean bandit killed it in both games on kill Frost and jaina and uh he did. You know, we had some good win across. The Junkrat was kind of a random thing. I think VDZ is level 3 with Junkrat. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. We just thought it looked good on, the, on that map. He's pretty good, and the combo with Rain seemed like it had a lot of potential, and it definitely played out quite a bit. They, they think they'd catch us, and then they'd get comboed, and Rain ripped higher pretty hard. Yeah, really? Uh, no kidding. Uh, actually, I completely, I don't know why I'd, I missed this first question. So, both t- games, you banned Ana. What, <laughs> what's the story there? All right, uh, we did scout. We did scout uh, a little bit on uh, their team, and I, I, I didn't even check if it was the person we thought was playing support. But they did seem to have a uh, the first. They did seem to have a couple people that did really well with Ana, and it's not a healer that we feel uh, works very well against the uh, the double front line uh, double front line Kel'Thas because then it's uh, we can't get to Ana. She's so far away. And all of our damage can only really hit the front line. I, that's a good point, I guess. I mean, yeah. I, I, it looks like Gravent on Calculator Throw has a level 12 on it. I don't know if that's who you're scouting out, but... Yeah, um, he had played... I think that was it. We saw someone had played a lot of Ana recently, and it's not a healer we like dealing with. And she's pretty decent right now. She's definitely not so bad, for sure. All right. I mean, I, that's why I kind of figured, since both your teams yeah. don't have an... Uh, done anything with ngs before there's not really any record of mm-hmm. either team so I, I had to, i was sitting there in in the lobby in draft and i was like this this has to be some type of you guys right clicking their name in lobby and seeing what they played <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, i mean that's good it's something that you want to like you do it now with more and more games that start coming out every week you'll have more and more records like for mm-hmm. two weeks from now when you play your next round of people you'll have a whole set of history to look at and look into um yeah. Do you guys do? Do you guys have like a practice sesh? Like you, they like do a lot of scouting reports or anything like that that you guys go into. Um, not really. We did a little bit of that uh, today. Like we opened Hot's logs and looked at some of our map statistics to try to figure out which uh, maps we'd like to ban and which maps we'd like to play. But other than that, we haven't done too much of that yet, at least. Not yet. Maybe looking forward to it in the future. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay. Well, that, and that's all that I got for me. So I guess if you guys, if you got any uh, shout outs that you want to say. Um, I want to thank you for casting. Thank Calcade for playing. It was a lot of fun. Thank the team. <laughs> Doing well. It's fun. Good time. And so when's your guys' next game? Do you know? Um, I no, not officially scheduled, but okay. I think it's against uh, Minnesota Vikings, the uh, Minnesota Lost Vikings. Ooh, Minnesota Lost Vikings. Yeah, like, I think uh, probably Friday. Gotcha. All right. Well, uh, people will definitely have to look out for that, and I guess the other yeah. your other competitors in Division D East will have to look <laughs> out for you after now that you got one win under your belt. So next yeah. next round, you're going to be going out with more people with the one win, at least mm-hmm. one win, anyways. But uh, well, congratulations again on your first win in NGS, Thanks. and uh, good luck in the future. Thank you. All right. Have fun. All right, guys. So that's going to be it for me. Uh, I appreciate everybody stopping by. It's been really fun. I hope you had some fun viewing. It wasn't too bad. Other than my little overlay mishaps. <laughs> but that's, so that's going to be it for me. Uh, you can see I will be um playing a game tomorrow hopefully if all my teammates show up as i did not be able to play the day and a cast on wednesday along with another game so should be seeing more of me so for all those people that shot me a follow today i really appreciate it um that's going with oh, i just closed everything so unfortunately i'm not able to do the shout outs because i just closed everything up but uh thanks and i will probably be shooting you guys over to somebody else that's streaming right now let's make sure i can uh figure it out and we can do a raid over there so that way you can just keep watching some fun ngs hots all right well thanks for everything guys and have a good night